Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about our inverse trig functions that we talked about in the last section. But in this section, we're going to move ahead more into the calculus and talk about the derivatives and the integrals of these inverse trig functions. Or I should say the derivatives of these trig functions, okay? And the corresponding integrals that arise because of that, okay? So in the last section, we covered the basics of these inverse functions, why they exist, the ranges of the angles that they can uh, return and things like this, okay? And in this section, we're going to define the derivative of every one of those inverse trig functions, and we will work some problems that talk about that. So rather than derive them all, I'm just going to, uh, to put them up on the board sort of as fact, because uh, you're going to just end up having to, to, uh, to use them, and, uh, and we're going to use them in our problem. So I'm going to focus more on how to use them rather than how to prove them. Your book is going to be there to show you why they arise and how to prove that they arise. I'm going to focus more on, okay, this is truth. How do you actually use them to solve problems on your test? Okay. So the uh, derivatives of the inverse trig functions are as follows. Okay, the derivative uh, of the inverse sine function is going to equal 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. Okay, the derivative with respect to x of the inverse cosine function is very similar. It's neg negative 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, now look at that symmetry. That's kind of nice. The derivative of the inverse sine or the arc sine is equal to this. The derivative of the inverse cosine is the same exact thing with a negative sign out front. So that's very, very nice. Okay, the derivative of the tangent, the inverse tangent function, okay, is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, uh, and let's just go ahead and continue on, I think, over here to make best use of the board, okay? The derivative of the cotan inverse cotangent of x uh, is just going to equal negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. So notice it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. The derivative of the inverse tangent is equal to this. The derivative of the inverse cotangent is equal to negative of the same thing. So that's kind of nice. It's, you see some symmetry here that, that makes your life uh, simpler. The derivative of the secant function, the inverse secant function, I should say, uh, is going to equal 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And by now, I think you see the pattern. The derivative of the cosecant function inverse, or the arc cosecant function, is just going to be equal to negative 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So you see it's the same symmetry. Uh, derivative of the secant, the inverse secant, gives you something. The derivative of the inverse cosecant gives you the same thing with a negative sign. Now, the reason these derivatives worked out so nice was precisely because of the range of angles that we picked or the, the smart math guys picked, when they defined these inverse functions, that those definitions, those specific ranges that were chosen lead to these very nice derivatives and the fact that they're so similar and so symmetric. So that's why that was done for those specific ranges, okay? So notice that for every inverse trig function that we've talked about, we have a corresponding derivative. So you put this in your bag of tricks with everything else. You know how to take derivative of, 